If the kitchen is one of my favourite parts of the caravan, another real... Oh. <laughs> Shut up, donkey. <laughs> Never work with animals, eh? Welcome to Not Another White Box, the channel that brings you all that's cool, quirky and unusual in the caravan world. My name is Cameron and today you're unusually joining me in the car because we're on our way to Bristol to pick up a brand new Bailey Discovery D44L, which Bailey have very kindly said that we can borrow for the week and take it on holiday and see what we think of it. So we're on the M5 now, we're not far from Bristol. But first, we're going to make a quick stop at Gloucester Services because if you're British and you're watching the video, you will know that it's the rule you have to stop at Gloucester Services if you pass it. <laughs> so if you've ever travelled up and down the motorway in Great Britain, you'll know that on the whole, motorway service areas are pretty dire, if we're honest. And Gloucester Services kind of changed all that when it opened in 2014. It incorporates a farm shop, a restaurant, uh, a little takeaway area, and there's miles of footpaths and things around it so you can stretch your legs and give the dog a walk etc and there are no chain stores here whatsoever it is all local produce and everything is prepared fresh either on site or nearby and they have a great selection of local products and just it's, it just feels very bougie and it's a nice place to stop so with a few essentials grabbed for the weekend, we're going to continue our journey down the M5 to the Bailey factory in Bristol. But before we get there, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the Discovery D44L. It's launched just this year at the February NEC show in 2023. And it's a brand new model. It's a completely new layout for Bailey um, in this range. And it sleeps four people. Uh, the price is set to be around £21,499 and the impressive thing about it is, is it's such a compact caravan. It's only 4.17 metres long at the body shell and weighs 1,083 kilograms fully laden. So with those facts at hand, we're now just arriving at the Bailey of Bristol factory and I am so excited to be here. It was such a nice offer for them to give us and this is the prototype model this is the one that was at the show it hasn't actually gone into production as of yet when we were filming this so i actually think we could even be the very first people to use this caravan so that's something of a claim to fame i'm going to take that but as usual i'm going to give it a fair review it's going to be um, my immediate thoughts to the caravan and we're going to give an honest appraisal of it after we've been away in it for a few days so with everything in hand, we're going to set off now and head to our destination, which is about an hour north of Bristol, just near the Forest of Dean, uh, in a small town called Westbury on Severn, but more about that later. Let's get some initial thoughts. So we've picked up the caravan um, from Bailey at Bristol and um, just wanted to get the first sort of 10, 15 miles out of the way first and get used to it a little bit. And my first impression is, I can't believe how easy it is to tow. It's so lightweight and small. Um, we've got a pretty average car. It's a, a two litre diesel Volkswagen Tiguan. Okay, and I know it, it can tow quite a lot, this car, and I've certainly towed bigger caravans than this on the back of it. But you often get with modern caravans that they kind of bully the car a little bit and it feels like they're bouncing a lot on the road. And the discovery despite the fact we've not yet put our stuff in it either so it's it's not loaded to its optimum um, weight it's absolutely no bother whatsoever I'm actually really pleasantly surprised by how well it tows um, it's, it's absolutely great to be honest uh, the sun's out and it's a lovely day and I can't wait to get to the campsite now and take a much better look inside we're just arriving now at Apple Orchard Campsite in Westbury on Severn and this is somewhere where we've actually been a few times before and we really like this place, it's got a really nice vibe about it. Owners Carolyn and Dave cultivated it from absolutely nothing and it's a real family affair. It's got a small cafe and restaurant with a bar, full toilet and shower facilities, mains electric hookups and it's just absolutely idyllic, it's in a beautiful setting. So after a long day travelling on the road, we were just ready to just move into the caravan and put all our stuff where it needed to be. 
And that brings me on to one of the first impressions of the discovery, is how bright and airy it feels once you're on site and actually using it. We also found that all our belongings just slipped into place and there was somewhere to put absolutely everything. And everything within the caravan was just simple and easy to use and we got on with it very quickly. My wonderful other half, Chris, is just preparing us some dinner here. As soon as you get in the Discovery, it's just easy. We didn't have to get instruction books out or anything. Everything just works and had its place. So we had dinner rustled up in no time at all, which would then leave us the evening to explore the caravan a little bit more. But I couldn't wait to try out one of my new toys, which is this portable fire pit from Go Outdoors. And I've been looking for something like this for a while. And as soon as this popped up for sale, I got straight down there and bought it. And this is the first time that we've got to use it. And we love just sitting out of the caravan in the evening and just taking in the great outdoors. So after a long day, I'm not going to do too much to camera. We're just going to enjoy the evening and pick this up in the morning and give you some first thoughts and impressions about the Bailey Discovery. The next morning we woke up feeling refreshed. Uh, the bed was very comfortable and we got a great peaceful night's sleep and just left the heating on low. We've got a Truma Combi 6E boiler in this Discovery, so it's more than efficient for heating the caravan and actually works really well in this small space. We like the fact that we didn't have to put the bed away straight away. We could just sit and have breakfast at the dinette area. So although this is a four berth, for two people, it works really, really well. So it was lovely to just sit and have breakfast and take in the surroundings. But we also couldn't help but notice that we've not got the weather on our side today. So um, we were sort of thinking what we could do. And Bailey liked to sell this as being an adventurous, outdoorsy caravan for young people. So we decided to indulge in one of our favourite activities, which is shopping. We decided to visit Cheltenham, which is a nearby historic spa town. And it's actually a really good place to go shopping. It has an enormous shopping centre in the town centre. And the high street has all the big names and everything that you would expect to find on a decent high street. In fact, we had such a good time that we kind of forgot about the task in hand. Um, I do apologise. <laughs> we had some lunch, did some more shopping, ended up having dinner there and didn't get back to the caravan until very late. But I thought I'd grab the camera and show you quickly about making the beds up in the Discovery D44L. Now, uh, we'll come back to the side dinette and the bunk beds later. But the front double is six foot two tall by four and a half foot wide. So it's a pretty average double bed in a caravan, uh, slightly bigger in proportion than some of the fixed beds even. We found that the cushions didn't have bolsters in them like you expect in modern caravans, so it actually made a really nice flat bed. And it was really supportive and just, it, you know, had a great night's sleep on it, which you don't often get on caravan beds where you have to make up several cushions and have joins in the middle of your back, etc. So plus points to the Discovery there for making a completely flat double bed at the front. Putting the bed away the next morning, uh, it's very simple to do. Um, I've decided to make a bit of a hash of it on camera for reasons I don't really know. I blamed Jin the night before. I moved the cushions round to make it a little bit more comfortable. Um, you will notice on the Discovery D44 that the cushions um, are actually shaped slightly in the front corner, which is why I'm turning them round. Uh, it just helps them fit against the front bulkhead. But we found it very easy to deal with and a piece of cake to put away and set up. It's probably a good time to talk about the kitchen and to be honest this is one of the main selling points of the caravan in my opinion because it's so big for the size of the caravan, it's just amazing how much space there is to put everything. So like we've just got up and um, we just started making breakfast and there's room to put your coffee pots out, there's room to boil the kettle. You're not falling over yourself, we've still got the drainer out as well as having space to prepare food. And it's just amazing to me how small this caravan is, yet how large the kitchen is. There are so many caravans on the market with fixed beds that have smaller, more impractical kitchens than this. So really quite impressed with it. Even things like the storage, there's just tons of places to put everything. 
and Bailey have made sure that the cupboards are tall enough to fit a cereal box in, <laughs> which is something that constantly gets fed back by caravanners, that little things like that, making cupboards too small, um, just can make or break the caravan being a usable space. Even things like uh, the combination Thetford triplex oven and grill, underneath that, um, because it's not got the separate grill, um, the cupboard for the pan store is much larger than normal. And as a result, we've not only squeezed all our pans in there, but all our cleaning products as well, which you wouldn't normally get in a cupboard underneath the oven in a caravan with a separate grill. I don't know about you, but I've never used the grill and the oven at the same time. So combining the two to gain extra storage is a real big plus point in my book. And um, the fridge is also more than generously sized. Um, it's a Dometic fridge, so <laughs> Gotta be careful what I say there. Personally, I find the touch screen is a little bit counterintuitive. Once you know the knack of turning it on and off, um, it's quite good. We also have to cover up the, the blue lights on the front at night because it's just so bright. But that is every caravan that's not unique to the Bailey. The same fridge is pretty much the industry standard now for British caravans. So you're going to get that no matter what caravan you buy. It's just a quirk of caravanning. Um, you also notice there's no cupboard down here um, and that's because that's where the gas bottles are stored on the outside um, but we do have this handy drawer at the top which houses all the knives and forks uh, and unbelievably at this price point everything is soft shut too. Amazing. So I'm so impressed by this kitchen it's probably the best feature of the caravan I would say because when you've got the space to cook, when you've got the space to prepare food, and you've got that little bit of flexibility in the design of it, such as the movable drainer to make even more worktop space, it's absolutely brilliant. All your controls for the caravan are up here, so they're kind of up and out of the reach if you've got small children. Um, at the top, at almost eye level, is the heater control, which is a digital screen um, with a turn dial that sets the temperature and you can control how hot the water is, etc. from there. Again, it's all just in the right place. It's, it's all at the right height. The kitchen's a good working height. It's just really well thought out and I'm definitely very impressed by it. If the kitchen is one of the best parts about the caravan, uh, another really, really great feature of the Discovery D44L is this side dinette. Now, there's only two of us using it this weekend and this caravan works beautifully as a two berth because what we found is, although there is a large table um, that you can seat four around, which stands up in the middle, it stores just on the end of the kitchen. When there's just the two of us, we've left the table away, um, used the front end uh, lounge for sitting in and obviously making the bed up and we've just sat and ate at this table the whole weekend so far it just works so well as a as a two berth but if there are four of you then it sort of gets more interesting of how versatile this layout is because this area makes into a bunk bed which we're going to have an attempt at putting up later which i've not done before so we can struggle through that together <laughs> there's lots of extra bits of wood and various things that fold so i'm going to dive into that probably tonight after i've had a gin or two but this tiny area makes a single bunk below um, and there's a bunk bed above. But again, when there's just two of you, you can position the dinette two ways. So you may have noticed that the cushion um, is pointing the same um, as the front lounge cushion. And the nice thing about this is, um, you end up with a long sofa here, so you can sit down at this end and put your feet up and have space to relax. But if you do want it as somewhere to sit and eat at together, Bailey have devised this clever little mechanism whereby this bar drops in like so and there's velcro on the back of the cushion it just fits over like that so you can sit both adults at this table as a proper dinette and have a backrest and it's this kind of versatile multi-purpose caravan design that's just so lacking in Britain now and it's so wonderful to see it applied to such a small caravan like this. And I think because the space is smaller, Bailey have had to be more intelligent with where they put things, particularly storage and things like that. So throughout the caravan, there's just lots of little things that 
I kind of wish that we had on more expensive caravans, such as the bigger kitchen, the way you can adapt the seating to suit you. It's things like the shoe locker that's right by the entrance door. Uh, you know, all the extra shelving, the various extra hooks and things for hanging towels and coats. These are just little touches that we don't necessarily shout about in the brochure, but when you're actually using the caravan as an experienced caravaner like myself, you really appreciate those finer details that don't necessarily cost a lot to produce, but it's just very thoughtful design. And that's really where the Discovery D44L wins. With the weather improving and thoughts turning to what outdoor activities we could do, we had a quick look through the Bailey brochure, which shows people venturing out, cycling and doing whatever. So we decided to get out there and go and do some more shopping. This time we went to Gloucester, starting at Gloucester Keys, which is uh, like an outlet store. And Gloucester is actually a really nice place to visit and it's not far at all from the campsite, maybe 20, 25 minutes in the car, if that. And Gloucester Keys has been fairly recently overhauled and redeveloped. It's a myriad of old mill buildings and, and new developments that are all housing cute little restaurants and bars and cafes and things. And you can just have a wander around the marina at your leisure and look at all the big boats and then head up into town to find even more shops. It'll come to no surprise to you if you've watched any of my videos before that probably my favourite shop there was the Gloucester Antique Centre, which is usually the kind of shop that I would make a beeline for when we visit somewhere new. Lots of things to see and do here and a couple more pieces obtained for some of our classic caravans at home and they even had a well stocked record shop, in fact there was a couple in the town so I was well happy there. Once we'd sort of had a wander around and seen all there was to see we found that we ended up at the cathedral which is very impressive even if you're not really into that sort of thing. We couldn't help but have a wander around and just explore the area and see what it had to offer. One of the things that we've actually really enjoyed about the caravan that works really well is the washroom. Now it is tucked away in one corner and it is an all in one wet room, which I know a lot of people don't like, but the caravan obviously is quite small in size. So you're never going to get a separate shower in it, but actually as wet rooms go, it's pretty big. Let me show you. There's plenty of space in here for a separate sink, which is this kind of nice contemporary Belfast style sink. Uh, you've got the shower here and a shower curtain that goes all the way around and we actually have a proper fitted Thetford toilet which has uh, electric flush and I guess the nearest rival to um, the Discovery D44L is the Swift Base Camp 4 which compared to this space um, the base camp has a much smaller washroom and an older style bench toilet so this washroom just works really well. You've got this huge storage cupboard here that has plenty of space for toiletries, certainly for a family of four. Um, and also my personal favorite thing is the blown air heating duct comes into the bathroom um, and it goes just where your feet are by the loo. So uh, it's quite a good place to sit actually. <laughs> and what ends up happening um, is this, this small enclosed room ends up becoming a bit like a hot box because of the heating. So drying towels, coats, etc. Um, isn't an issue. The only thing I can find to criticise about the washroom area is there is only one hook in here for a towel. Um, realistically, you're going to want to have um, at least four hooks because it's a four berth. So, uh, but again, fairly trivial things. As a space overall, it's really big and I'm quite impressed by how well it works. And as we've lived with the caravan this weekend, the space to put everything and we have actually used the shower. Uh, we personally tend to prefer using site facilities anyway, just because you're filling up the water and emptying the waste when you've had the shower. But for the purposes of the test, we have used it and you've got plenty of hot water. Like I say, the fact that it's got the blown air heating comes in here also makes it, it takes away that that horrible thing that a lot of caravans have where the washroom is just an ice box separate to the rest of the interior. Um, and we also found that it uh, is a wet room and one of the criticisms of them is that obviously things get wet in here when you use the shower. Again, because of the heating, um, shut the vents in the rest of the caravan, concentrate all the heat in here, it actually dries itself out. Uh, but there is natural ventilation from the skylight above 
Um, there's no window, which the jury's kind of out on that on whether you need a window or not in a caravan washroom. It, you get away with it in here because it's not a very large washroom. Um, but yeah, we've found throughout the weekend, opening the skylight has vented it just fine after you've had a shower and you want the condensation to go. But also just cranking the heating up a bit works really well. And it's so simple just putting the blown air heating duct into the washroom. But you just don't see that in many caravans. So I was quite impressed to see that very small but incredibly practical detail in a caravan at this price point. Just as you walk in the main entrance door to the caravan, uh, immediately on your right is the wardrobe. And for the size of the caravan, the wardrobe is huge. Um, it's got plenty of hanging space, but it's got lots of dividing shelves in. So although you don't have drawers for things like your underwear and socks and that kind of thing, there's plenty of space to put it all here. We found that um, all our stuff's kind of quite well spread out in there really. Um, and you know how many costume changes I do in a video, so there's plenty of clothes in there for a weekend. Um, also the ladder for the side bunk bed is stored in there. And one of my absolute favorite practical features of this caravan is the shoe cupboard at the bottom, right next to the door. How many times in the caravan do you walk in and fall over everybody's shoes in the doorway? And Bailey have put this shoe cupboard right next to the door. So you just stand on the mat, take your shoes off, pop them in the cupboard, they're out of the way, you're not falling over them, keep the floor clean, because um, it has got lino floor in here that there isn't a drop-in carpet set for it that's supplied as standard. So you do want to keep the floor clean. And a shoe cupboard, it's so simple. But there's caravans that are twice the price of this that don't have something like that. And you have to traipse through the caravan to put your shoes in the wardrobe or put the awning up and have somewhere to store them. So again, I feel overall living with the caravan for, for a few days that it actually works really well. And a lot of these small practical details are things that you actually don't find on caravans that are more expensive than this one. And that has been the real shock for me of using this. Um, it's just the little touches like that that just make the user experience much easier. And especially living in a small space, this caravan is tiny compared to most modern ones. It's still a very decent space and I'm just really impressed with how Bailey have arranged everything inside to just make it work really well. So obviously this is the Bailey Discovery D44L. The clue is in the name, it's a four berth. So this weekend we've obviously been living in it as a two berth, worked brilliantly for couples, lots of space, fine. But how does it compare if you're actually living in it as a family of four? Typically you'd expect it to be a, a younger couple who would buy it with two younger children in tow. So in the interest of doing a complete and thorough review, we have devised three tests to answer the most important questions that your kids might have about your potential next new caravan. Starting with possibly the most important burning question that kids would have when they're on holiday today. Where can I charge my phone? So probably the easiest place to charge your phone is in the kitchen. There are two main plug sockets here and also a cigarette lighter. Um, so if you've got one in the car, you can transfer it to the caravan. Um, there are four plug sockets throughout the caravan, two in the kitchen, and there are two down below in between the two dinettes. So mum and dad can charge one phone and the kids can charge another. But the baby has one more trick up its sleeve for charging your devices. So one of the nice little extras that the Discovery D44L has, which I wasn't really expecting to find at this price point, um, is these LED spotlights, which are fully adjustable, uh, and there's four throughout the caravan. But two of them are actually hiding concealed USB charging points. So if you're the child on the top bunk, you can charge your phone up there. And there's also one in the front corner of the front dinette. And it's just a little practical touch which makes it easier to use the caravan. So there's a grand total of seven charging points in the caravan. So kids go mad, bring all your devices at once. You can charge them all in here, whether you're on mains electric or off grid. Oh, so um, now my phone's recharging and I've caught up on social media, we should probably move on to test number two. And I've done some research about this, about what things kids will prioritize. And um, test number two, is the washroom big enough to film a TikTok inside of? <laughs> Test 
test number three for the kids. And again, this is probably one of the most important questions they want to know. How good is the top bunk of the bunk bed? So uh, I've not put it up yet. Uh, I don't know how to, so we're just gonna figure this one out together. I've had a few gins, so this could go one of a few ways. Um, I'm pretty sure this table forms the support for the bunk. Um, so we fold the leg like so. Maybe if I just take the cushions off. Also probably should have looked at the instructions. Um, let's have a look. Let's move those out of the way. So this is quite simple. It just flips up like so. But we must bridge this gap with the table. Yep, correct so far. Then this piece is kind of just floating. Let's have a look. Oh, we're getting somewhere. That was easy. So now we have these extra wooden pieces that will stop you falling out of the bed. They go in like so. Do they? No. That's not right. I told you I should have read the instructions. Okay, we're going to revisit that. Is it this one? The clips don't appear to actually do anything. So what I'm going to do is just rest those in. Hope for the best. So for the top bunk, we've got these three cushions that fold out. Got it. Um, and then for the bottom bunk, I'm just guessing we use these ones. But it would appear that we're missing one cushion. Right. What I do have is the ladder, which goes in the middle, like so. Do I, do I dare get on this? <laughs> I tell you what, I'm definitely very under that weight. Let's give it a go. Oh. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, to be honest, I, I am up here and it's obviously not meant for adults. It is a children's bed, um, but it is holding my weight. Got to be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed uh, that one of the cushions is missing and these side pieces don't actually clip in properly. I'm going to give Bailey the benefit of the doubt with this one because it is a prototype caravan and we are the first people to actually uh, sleep in it properly. So. I'm guessing that come the actual production models, they will have figured out that these bits actually work. Because um, to be honest, the cushions don't fit very well at the top. Um, perhaps maybe the bottom one should go up here, I'm not sure. 
but we've looked in every single cupboard and there is not an extra cushion so i will ask bailey and update the video um, and let you know what the official answer is there so overall what are my thoughts on the bailey discovery d44l now we've got to live in it for a few days and experience uh, the caravan as your average caravaner would experience it um, I think I've got to say I think it's fantastic value for money um, our favorite parts that we found are the kitchen it's massively practical as I've already said great working height great amount of storage in it um, the kitchen is probably for me one of the main selling points of the van especially if you've got a family or if you're a couple like us who like to cook in the caravan um, you've got plenty of space to prepare food as well as cook it which you just don't get in caravans this size that have this amount of seating. Usually you've got to opt for something like a two berth and you don't have that flexibility then of leaving the bed up and still having somewhere to eat. So huge plus points for the kitchen. Um, I also want to commend the dinette. Again, I've already said it's got that slightly versatile arrangement where you can have this as a long sofa which to be honest, if one of us has felt tired in the afternoon, it's a space where you can just lay down without actually having to make the bed up, which is just, it makes all the difference when you're using the caravan. Because um, these seats are quite small, but rival caravans such as the Swift Base Camp 4 have exactly the same size seats, but they don't connect together like they do in this D44L, which just makes all the difference to that piece of design. Um, I also have to really commend how well it tows and uh, that's mainly down to how long the A-frame is. Um, it's a really lightweight caravan. Um, it's, it's just honestly fantastic to tow. Um, I've also got to comment on the practicality. For its size and for its price point, I can't believe how many extra little details there are such as coat hooks by the door, extra shelving to put your keys. Uh, lips on shelves to stop things falling off them during transit. You can just tell that everything in here has been thought out by a caravanner who's actually going to use the end product, which as I've already alluded to in the video, you'll get caravans that cost £50,000 that are less practical than this from what I've seen. So yeah, great, great points all round. As for the negatives, there are a few. Um, we've obviously, I think the biggest disappointment was the bunk bed. Uh, which again, I'm having a word with Bailey and going to ask what the deal is there because it doesn't work. Um, there wasn't enough cushions. The protective side pieces didn't actually clip in properly. Uh, they both had the same bracket on them. I'm almost certain this is a prototype oversight because it will have been fitted from another caravan um, in the Bailey range. So I would thoroughly expect that production models would have sorted that out. Um, I think another thing that I would say, sticking with the interior, um, is it does feel quite sparse in here. Uh, we've said all weekend that it feels very plain. I know it's very contemporary and that's what I like about it. But I do feel that if you owned one, you'd want a little bit of something to judge it up a bit in here. Unless this kind of minimalist look is, is what you like. We just personally found, with our limited amount of stuff that we've packed, obviously because we're only using it for a long weekend, you probably just want a little bit of something, extra scatter cushions, just something to give it a little bit more of a cosy, homely feel. But I feel like the bare bones of it are a perfect starting point for that. Um, the other thing that I would critique is outside the um, water services, so the fresh water and the wastewater. Um, they, they're too close together, so to fit the, the Aquarol and the Wastemaster together, I found that I've had to turn the Wastemaster to a certain angle and get the Aquarol as near as I can, but use the full length of the water pipe, obviously trying to ensure it still hits the bottom of the barrel so it gets all the water in the tank. They're just a little bit too close together. Uh, in an ideal world, you'd probably move uh, the wastewater point further back, so it's just a little bit more out of the way. Again, very minor point, especially given the price of the van. Aside from that, the caravan, it just it is the cheapest four berth that's uh, built in Britain. 
And I'm surprised that list of faults isn't longer, to be honest. Um, I'm so pleasantly surprised by the build quality, the standard of the furniture, uh, the standard equipment, such as the uh, Truma combination um, water heater and blown air, which is a much more expensive fitting uh, than the whale system that other manufacturers use. But the Truma one definitely works better in my opinion. It's quieter, much, much quieter. Every night we've been able to sleep with the blown air heating on and it's not disturbed us because especially as it's tucked all the way down at the back end of the dinette, um, a lot of vans would fit them under the bunk where your head would be at the front bed. Bailey have put it out the way and I absolutely cannot fault it. It's worked really well. So to have things like that at this price point, the USB charging, the extra LED lights, um, it just defies the price of the caravan, to be honest. So it leads me on to say, would I recommend this caravan? Is it not another white box approved? I'm not only going to give it full not another white box approval, but I'm going to give it a special accolade that I've not yet given to a caravan. And I'm going to name the Discovery D44L as the best value for money caravan that is on sale in Britain right now. For the spec, for the price, for the weight, the size, as an all round compromise of car caravan design goes, I don't think you can find something um, that works better than this. And no people watching are gonna critique the front window because of how small it is. And we've been through that in my discovery tour as to why the window is the size that it is. But to be honest with you, living, living with it for the weekend, it's not been a problem at all. When you have three windows at the front and you're sat in this corner and the blinds interfering with your head, we've been able to sit in the corners and read a book in the evening or something, and you've just got this bolster behind you. Weirdly, it actually works better than having three windows in, in my experience this weekend. So don't be put off by that, is what I will say. And I am with you on the initial critique. I, I think it could be bigger. But having actually lived with the caravan now for a few days, not a problem at all. So overall, it's a fabulous van. We've got a few minor things. One, we're going to write off to it being a prototype and a few little bits. But honestly, as an all round compromise of caravan design, it is fabulous. So I wholeheartedly recommend the Bailey Discovery D44L. I hope you've enjoyed coming along with us for the ride this weekend. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to Not Another White Box. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again soon. Just a quick footnote, when we delivered the caravan back to Bailey of Bristol, we did report that the bunk bed assembly didn't function properly, um, which Bailey were quite confused because obviously, as you've already seen in the video, in their official photography of the caravan, it all worked fine. So I think for this particular van, it had gone walkabout at the NEC, which happens for many, many caravans that get displayed there. And of course, Bailey confirmed that on the standard production model, this bunk bed will all work and be configured properly. I just thought it was fair to mention that we gave them the feedback and they took it on board. And as expected, it was just a simple trivial issue because it is a demo van.